Um, hi, Girish. Thank you so much for taking the time out to be here today. Um, hi, Ruta. So let's get started, right? I mean, everybody on this panel is talking about it, on this track is talking about it in terms of sustaining innovation. Um, employees are well set in the work from home uh, scenario. We've got L&D and training being dispensed, onboarding happening. Uh, now the question really moves to how can we sustain innovation in the remote environment? Is this something that you know you and your organization had already sort of solved for before the lockdown got enacted? Or like most organizations in the industry, is this something that you had to sort of um, solve for on the fly? And, and what did you do? And how was the journey been for you? Sure. Uh, for first of all, uh, good evening, uh, Namita. Uh, good evening, everyone. It's a pleasure to be here uh, talking to a great audience. Uh, so yeah, uh, coming to uh, coming to the innovation and uh, about our organization. Well, uh, like most organizations, we we uh, we were caught totally unaware. Uh, maybe taking a step back, we believed, and I also believed that uh, remote innovation is difficult. And uh, we, I still, I, I had, uh, we always felt that people need to be in office and uh, uh, need to be working together, collaborating a lot more. But then, uh, but then, as you all know, lockdown 1.0 happened, and 100% uh, of our employees were uh, were uh, in their homes. Uh, so we didn't have a choice. Uh, but at the same time, we had to continue what we were doing. A few very interesting things came out, uh, and kind of surprised me as well. Uh, now, uh, we, I didn't expect beyond my expectation. Uh, we thought, and I honestly, I had um, I told everybody back in our headquarters that there might be a hit in the productivity and uh, to just have some patience while we sort all this out. Uh, but importantly, uh, I mean, uh, most and most of our projects just happened. Mm -hmm. uh, so a couple of th two, three examples I'll give you, very specific ones where, uh, where kind of surprised me. Uh, we are a gaming company. Uh, we work with a lot of gaming machines in the office. And we felt, uh, yeah, without those gaming machines, we will not be able to be completely productive. We realized as soon as people went uh, went remote, uh, many of them tried, tried created simulators. And this happened within a matter of days, and which kind of surprised us also. Uh, so that was, that was very interesting. Uh, second thing was, uh, and one part of our team which does um, uh, which uh, takes our products to our customers, different casinos around the world, and uh, installs them, trains them, uh, get get things going. Uh, we realized that, uh, well, in a, on a typical uh, customer install, we had a lot of people traveling. Okay. Uh, but we realized that a few customer installs which were due happened completely remote, okay. without not even a single travel. Of course, okay. travel could not have happened. Uh, so. That was something uh, very, uh, very surprising. The third and the most important important bit was people within this time frame uh, of uh, lockdown and uh, just a few weeks, people got together and built new product. People built new social distancing product for our customers. I mean, uh, that was again very surprising and uh, this happened within weeks. Uh, so, I mean, we, I have personally not seen uh, such a fast pace of innovation here. Uh, so, so what happened? Uh, possibly, I mean, people people knew that they had to come up with these products before the casino start opening back. Yeah. Uh, looking back, all of this uh, again surprised me. Not something that was planned, and we were not ready for it. Right. Looking back, I think uh, one of the decisions which we took probably 15, 18 months back, I think it was. Uh, it is what I felt was for the major factor for all of this. Mm -hmm. So initially, earlier, a couple of years back, we had a team for innovation. Right. We used to call it, you know, I mean, it had a name, Innovation Lab also. Right. Uh, just a, a year and a half back, uh, it was decided that, uh, no, we should not have a team for innovation. Innovation should be in every team's DNA. It should be a part of every team. Uh, we even took out the rename, the team which was uh, working on innovation. Uh, we mm. called it something else. So the the thought process was, uh, no, if if there's a team called innovation, then probably others would think that that's that's their their task, their activity, uh, not ours. So uh, this the whole transformation I think happened uh, when we spread out innovation. We kind of pushed it to the teams. We made their individual view responsibilities. Uh, I think uh, I think that is one thing important. What 
kind of um, the output of that kind of surprise through all these small stories which came came during the last few months right so uh, well uh, that's where we are we, we now now i stand corrected okay great so in that sense it was a wake up call for you like a lot of organizations but i think what um, you know what we're really interested to know is uh, even from an organizational perspective were there specific measures or enablers that you um, sort of put in place in order to be able to sustain an innovation in a remote environment and and did you have to pivot a lot of what the organization was already giving collaboration tools for example or yeah. i think when we were in discussion the whole concept of training employees for empathy uh, you know towards colleagues as well as customers um were certain things that you put in place or the organization at large put in place that sort of enabled this journey for you so it did it did uh, two two three two three very important things which we focused on as soon as people people were remote yeah. uh, one uh, you you brought about empathy uh, important thing was to tra- as i said we believed that people need to be in office and people were in office we did not have a uh, we did not have a, a remote working policy uh, we were uh, here and there allowing remote working but there was no policy per se Uh, it was important for uh, our managers and the leads and the team members themselves to know how to work with each other when they are remote. Right. Uh, not necessarily because uh, we we all know. I mean, I'm sure everybody knows about this. I mean, schools were not there, play schools were not there, the kids in the house, and uh, not necessarily all our homes are having uh, a, a kind of secluded area for work work. so right. we have we spent a lot of time in and we continue to spend time on that trying to educate everybody saying that uh, i mean it's different we need to empathize with our colleagues uh, mm-hmm. and we need to look at uh, look at things very differently that's one part of it second part of it is uh, tools what you talked about collaboration tools uh, we had a good set of collaboration tools but we still realized that that probably were not adequate uh, as much Uh, our uh, this was this was between uh, uh, between our corporate team and the india teams to work together to come up with uh, come up with secure system data security was another another very uh, very important factor they came up with very secure systems within the next 4 to 6 weeks uh, first for 4 to 6 weeks mm. where uh, people could uh, log into azure cloud and then access their desktops access to different servers in the um, in the in our office environment across the globe oh. so this happened pretty soon and uh, that uh, first few weeks were a uh, little bit of a uh, challenging for a few people mm-hmm. but beyond that i think it is it's, it's worked well and it's been working very well okay great awesome um so specifically around the question of empathy you know and and um, what you sort of put in place so were there training program sensitization how did you sort of enable that amongst your employees yeah uh well yeah th- so we had our again that was again a challenge because most right. of our trainings was in 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 house training i mean in the cl- in the in the room in the classroom training right, right. so uh, it was a real challenge so we had to do all these trainings also either online or mm-hmm. through, uh, through a webex uh, mm-hmm. or uh, col- different collaboration tools right. so we uh, we ma- initially we mandated these trainings uh, yeah. we said uh, no people have to attend people uh, not not everybody felt that that's an issue or some people some people felt that okay no we can manage it we will manage it but we wanted to ensure that uh, we mandate these trainings we we uh, we got hundreds and hundreds of uh, people employees going through these trainings across uh, this is done internal external uh, we were uh, the good part of it was uh, even external training that the trainer could could have been anywhere in india Right. so that helped uh, also because we could get the uh, get some good trainers uh, we can call a, we could uh, talk to different partners and we had a lot of options uh, to take care of that so uh, that worked well uh, because and then we got a, we got a great feedback from employees uh, once once these trainings have completed okay great um so lots of i think the very essence of the talk is is what you mentioned right in terms of democratizing innovation so that it becomes every single employee's cra almost um yeah. but just from the perspective of now looking forward i mean we're all in this for a while now uh, you know everyone's talking about how work from home is going to become the new normal um uh, therefore sustaining innovation is going to be a key way to you know keep your employees engaged and and continue to innovate in the new environment 
Um, what opportunities do you see coming forward for not just GCOs, but really the technology ecosystem as a whole, the startups, yeah. uh, large technology majors that are Indian? Um, you know, and then I'll maybe jump to an audience question after this. Sure. Uh, the most important thing, see, uh, I've given specific examples of example about how we came up with a completely new couple of new products actually, uh, which uh, I mean, uh, just to give you an example of the, it's it's a little funny, but still, uh, we are a gaming company. We 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 give uh, softwares to casinos. Okay. And now the casinos opened uh, when uh, when the U.S. states gave permission to open casinos. They obviously uh, gave some social distancing norms. Sure. So uh, what we had to do was, uh, I mean, it's very difficult to manually social distance when somebody's playing. These games are very close to each other. So we came up with a solution where if somebody somebody goes and sits on a game, yeah, the the next two games automatically get disabled. So even okay. if somebody wants to play, they cannot. So I mean that that took a uh, took a I mean uh, that's that's been very very popular right now. Uh, I mean every customers have been liking it liking the solution because that solves a lot of manual inter intervention which they have to do. Mm -hmm. uh, now coming back uh, to uh, your answer your question. So like these, our customers will be different post COVID. Uh, mm -hmm. I think that I think it's a great opportunity for all of us to look at what different solutions we need to come up with for our own customers. Uh, because I believe that our customers will not be the same even once the vaccine is there and once things get yeah. normal, yeah. the customers will look at things very differently uh, beyond uh, post COVID. So uh, one is a great opportunity uh, to come up with new products. And that's what we have been encouraging uh, uh, our uh, our colleagues to do it here. That's okay. one uh, one such uh, uh, on one of the things. Secondly, uh, I mean, uh, again, uh, we all know that uh, we probably we will never, most companies will never be 100% in office going forward. Yeah. And so remote working is going to stay here and it's for all of us to take advantage. Mm -hmm. Be it a startup, be it a GCO or any organization, it's for us to take advantage of that and um, and uh, make sure how, how it benefits us. Uh, be it either uh, through cost or collaboration, innovation, different aspects. But it's okay. for us to uh, see how it benefits. So these are these are the great. Uh, these are the these are the things which we see we need to really uh, exploit right now. Okay, great. Um, I think I'll just quickly take an audience question. I, someone um, from the audience has asked, "What are a few essential caveats of an ideal innovation culture?" In a GCU, so just to paraphrase, what are the essential pillars of an ideal innovation culture? And do you have any tips or tricks for senior leadership being able to inculcate this within organization? So how can they? Yes. True. Uh, I kind of will elaborate what I said. Uh, it really helped for us to uh, put innovation into each of the teams. Yeah. Uh, make them their responsibilities. Uh, look at we look at their look at their KPIs. Is what I would suggest. Mm -hmm. uh, look at uh, make it as part of their day-to-day uh, -day job, uh, and I believe uh, do not put too much of process around innovation. Uh, just make it free-flowing. Uh, give them the tools uh, and uh, tools, people, and all the skills which is required, and just but make it part of their uh, uh, part of their work. Mm -hmm. uh, we saw we saw a lot of new and creative things across teams, uh, which once. We figured out one team was done doing something very creatively. We could easily send it across. In, um, you replicate the different data across. You replicate the different data across. Okay, great. Um, okay. I think great. You know, the, um, the thing that I, I would probably great. want to stress the on. The thing that I, I would probably as want to of these stress. opportunities. Um, what are the two, three action items or key takeaways that you believe organizations need to walk away with? At, at, the end of yeah. crisis like this. So, is there is there something that they can do to leverage it and almost work it to their advantage? Almost? Yes. Yeah. Uh, maybe I've repeated some of the points, but I'll tell you just to summarize. These are this is probably three things which uh, all organizations should look at. Yeah. One, uh, I mean, uh, innovation, democratize, spread it across the teams. Uh, don't put too much of the processes around it, and uh, try to try to make sure uh, make sure. It becomes a part of every uh, every team's DNA. 
they should always be sensitive towards looking at how to improve what new things to come up with. Uh, look at look at your collaboration pl uh, platforms right now. As I said, uh, importantly, we will uh, we will 100% work from office. Uh, will be very the chances of that is very low going mm -hmm. forward. So look at the entire collaboration platforms because that plays a huge part in uh, in in innovation because people are used to uh, standing. Uh, I mean, uh, writing on the board and discussing in person. Uh, now that 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 thing has to be uh, covered by some good in, uh, collaboration platforms uh, which are available around. Uh, third and last thing, again I said uh, I've said uh, strategy process tools are all good, but at uh, end of the day it comes to people. Uh, so please look at what uh, I mean. Uh, I mean we talked about empathy. Uh, please look at how to uh, educate or how to train one another to understand that. This is a new environment. Uh, this is a completely new environment, new way of working. How right. to foster innovation at the end of the day it depends on the people. Yeah. How people uh, work uh, work well with each other uh, in this new environment. Those are probably the three things which I would uh, I would uh, emphasize on. Great, and all of these, of course, need to be in place um, even post once the worst past the worst of the lockdown and and really become long term for the organization. I'm sure that that is right. Okay, great. I think we're actually over time, but uh, thank you so much, Girish, for taking the time out. I think you summarized it perfectly in that innovation needs to become every employee's CRA. Um, I think it need, you need to build a culture of empathy within the organization, which is going to be most critical, um, not just internal looking, but also external facing, right? So, yeah. so thank you so much for taking the time out and enjoy the rest. Thank of you. Time. Thank, thank you. you. It was a pleasure. Thank, thank you. you.